Singularity, Abomination, and Desolation of Mankind, Section 12, Closing Comments, Part 1, A New World Order or an Old World Nightmare. One of the main reasons people are developing Singularity Tech is because they envision a utopian world where everyone is linked, where there are no secrets, at least among Everything this chapter covers are just parts of the New World Order's ultimate realization of its vision for the future world. One world united. But what it will actually be is one world completely enslaved, body, mind, and soul. This is the very kind of thing the Bible describes the Antichrist doing. Worship of the beast, implanted masses, dissolution of the Constitution, abolishing of states, control or eradication of free thought, genetic manipulation, extreme population control achieved by the planned termination of millions of people, especially those who will not submit to New World Order tyranny. People like Christians. It's all just the fulfillment of the twisted visions of revolutionary monsters like the Communists, the Hitlers, the Stalins, and all the heroes of the evolutionary worldview. Sadly, people forget history very quickly, so even if mankind wanted to avoid the mistakes of the past, they would still probably be doomed to repeat them. In America, history is the last thing that schools want their students to learn, and the history that is taught is largely rewritten or skewed. New generations are rising who have no knowledge of the of past dictators and their doctrines. The modern masses, enthralled by the modern media, repeat the mantras of the New World Order, calling for a great new world. Yes, we can. Peace, unity, diversity, blah blah blah. The masses are led by the news, by the media, repackaging and reselling communism and socialism, etc. So that their teachings now pass as the natural way of thinking for the politically correct modern man. Humanism, materialism, and an atheistic hatred for God are all hallmarks of our society, and they're so commonplace that those who do not follow suit are considered strange. Thus, the world is primed and ready for a one world order and the one man who will lead it. The New World Order and all its manifestations is the force creating the demand for the New World Order, and it will be the one to fulfill the demand as well. What people don't understand is that at the top of the New World Order power pyramid is the very power that wants to destroy and enslave mankind. The secret of the New World Order is it's not a human agency at all. It's really the devil's pyramid scheme and everybody's ready to buy in. It's in the New World Order symbols, such as on the one dollar bill, where you see the pyramid which, with the watchful eye and capstone, which is separated from the base of the pyramid. It's funny, that picture always puts me in the mind of the Lord of the Rings, the watchful eye of the evil lord at the top of the tower, looking over his kingdom of slaves. If you're wondering why all this seems to be linked, the stories, the movies, and reality, it's because it is. Everything around us is either trying to deceive men and pull them into a hive mind, one world order, or it's warning us against it and telling us of the true God. The new world order is structured like a pyramid, and near the top are the new world order leaders various wealthy and powerful influential men, influential men. Some are businessmen, some are world leaders, and the like. All are part of various organizations and secret societies, which are all connected at various levels within the New World Order's ranks. They have different names, the Illuminati, the Bilderbergs, the Trilateral Commission, etc. Most have some part in controlling the world but all consider themselves to be the elite of the earth, the puppet master.
masters of the world. The irony is that all of the members, as well as the organizations all the way up to the top, are actually puppets themselves. All of them are nothing more than marionettes to the real power behind the New World Order. I think most of the men involved in these shadowy organizations know that there's something beyond even the highest human powers of the NWO. Because they put it in their symbols and mention it in their credos. But I think few, if any, understand in the end. The New World Order was never about men ruling over other men. It's really about a completely alien race of non-human beings deceiving men in order to gain control of all men for the purpose of the annihilation of all mankind. And by annihilation, I don't just mean something as paltry as physical death, but also the eternal damnation of every man, woman, and child on earth. This is the terrible truth that most of the men bringing the New World Order don't understand, and they're not going to understand until it's too late. Section 12, Part 2 Technology and the End Times It's important for me to say that the things I'm writing about don't necessarily override any particular view of end times prophecy. Many Bible scholars and prophetic teachers teach on the prophecy of the Bible, and I believe many are right in their ideas of it. The thing is, many teachers have opposing views. For example, one says that the Antichrist must be Roman. Others say that he must be Muslim. But I think the key is to realize that he could easily be both. So many teachers and prophecy people get so focused on one side of view, viewing things for the last days, that they don't realize that it's possible that most spirit-filled teachers have a piece of the puzzle for the events that will take place in the last days not necessarily the whole puzzle, and that can be a real problem. We must remember that the Jews of old studied the scripture and the prophecies concerning the coming of the Messiah more than most of us do today. Yet when he came, they missed it, even though they knew all the prophecies. The reason is, is because they did not put together the puzzle. They only saw it happening one way. The general understanding was that the Messiah would come and wage war to free Israel. The problem is, is they did not realize that he would be coming twice, once to suffer and again to wage war. Thus, when he was standing right in front of them, they did not know him. Though he was fulfilling the prophecies, they all knew and told them directly that he was not only the Messiah, but God in the flesh. And yet they did not believe him because he did not come in the way that they thought he would. What disturbs me is that a similar thing could happen to us in our day concerning Jesus and the second coming and these last days. That's the danger of getting stuck in one way that the prophecy could be fulfilled. Another example is the lady riding on the beast on seven hills and such. Many think it's the Catholic Church. Many others think it's the European Union and a revised Roman Empire. And maybe it is. But what if it's a lot more? See, so I think that the truth is multifaceted and a lot of people have a bit of it. But it must be seen all together to make sense. The reason I'm making this point is because few, if any, see one of the things that I will believe that I believe will be a major player in these events, and that is technology. See, one thing all prophecy teachers have in common is they see the events of Revelation taking place in a world just like ours today, or actually more in a world as it was in the 80s. But what? It, if it all happens in a world moving towards a post-human, cybernetic tech world. The danger is that people think of technology as benign, and
even if technology is as big a part of the end time scenario as I think it will be, people might not recognize it when it happens. You see, everyone who is watching and waiting to warn the world against the Antichrist is expecting some weird guy to suddenly appear, wielding magic spells and hypnotizing the whole world. But what if it doesn't happen like that? What if all the magic stuff is just advanced technology, and the one world order of the Antichrist is only made possible by the advent of Singularity Tech, as I have been describing in this chapter? And what if the one world religion that we all know to be the hallmark of that order is nothing more than modern science? Because under the guise of being science, they could do just about anything and people would accept it, especially if they have been conditioned for it through media and the schools, etc. Even those who should know better might be taken in by it, because it comes subtly in a way not foreseen. Jesus warned that the deception in those days would be so powerful that even the elect would be deceived if such a thing was possible. In the light of that, we should be very wary. After all, many who claim to believe in God accept evolution, despite the fact that it's completely against everything that God stands for. Understanding the role of technology will play in the end times is crucial. Is a technological singularity come? I believe it is, and with it the final chapter of what we know as reality. The truth is that the world we know is more like a matrix than anything else. Our lives and the lives of those who have lived in the past are but a breath next to the true reality that we will all one day enter. This reality is passing away, and we will be in a reality that will never end, much like it is for a baby who is born from the womb, leaving behind the reality that they always knew for a new, truer reality, or like man who has awoken from a coma, or a man who is unjacked from the matrix. The real world is coming, but what it will be like for you is determined by one thing right here, right now, and that is, did you believe and receive Jesus and his payment for your sin? If so, you were already born again of the true world when it happened, and unjacking from this matrix will be just like finally going home after a lifetime of wandering. But for those who did not receive, the nightmare has just begun. But the good, good news is, today is the day of salvation, and right now you can have it all. All you must do is pray to God and ask Jesus to come and to save you. Give your life for him. Believe in what he did for you and for all men, and you will be saved. And the end will be just like the beginning of a new and beautiful world for you and a continuation of a relationship that is the greatest you will ever know. smile on a baby's face in the green of the trees in the twinkle of an eye I hear your lullaby in the song Smile on a baby's 
shines through Be in the twinkle. 